After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the basics of money market in India and its constituents, learn the fundamentals of functioning of call oblique notice money market in India, identify the participants and main characteristics of Indian call money market, understand the treasury bills market, types of treasury bills procedure of their auctions, evaluate the return on treasury bills. Money market. The money market is a market for short term financial assets that are close substitutes of money. The money market instruments are very liquid in nature and can be turned into money easily at low cost. It fulfills the requirement to meet short term mismatches in fund positions. Fund managers use the money market instruments to tide over their temporary fund surplus and shortages. The trading of funds in this market is on an unsecured basis. Money market instruments include call money, repos, treasury bills, commercial paper, certificate of deposit and commercial bills. All these instruments have varying degree of safety associated with them with highest for treasury bills and commercial bills being the least secure. A common feature of all these instruments is that all of them are issued at discount to their face value. The difference between the issue price and the maturity price is the interest oblique return on the instruments. The tenor of these instruments vary in the range of being overnight to one year. The central bank of the country uses these instruments to intervene and bring about the desired changes in liquidity positions of the economy. In India, the money market can be divided into organized and unorganized. All the above mentioned instruments constitute the regulated money market, whereas unregulated consists of players like money lenders, nidhis and chit funds and instruments like hundi which are not governed by a set of rules and regulations. Usually the interest rate charges from the borrower in this market are much higher as compared to the organized money market. Call money market. The call money market is the most active part of the Indian money market for uncollateralized lending and borrowing of funds. It is the most liquid segment of the money market. This market is predominantly overnight and is open for participation only to scheduled commercial banks and the primary dealers. When money is borrowed or lent for period between 2 days and 14 days, it is known as notice money. When the borrowing oblique lending of fund exceeds 14 days or more in the interbank market, it is referred to as term money. Participants in the call money market. This market is governed by the Reserve Bank of India, which issues guidelines for the various participants in the call oblique notice money market. RBI has restricted the entities permitted to participate both as lender and borrower in the call oblique notice money market to scheduled commercial banks excluding RRBs, cooperative banks other than land development banks and primary dealers. The call money market in India is dominated by the banks through primary dealers, henceforth PDs, and financial institutions are also permitted to participate in a restricted manner. Non-bank institutions other than PDs are not permitted in the call oblique notice money market. Banks oblique PDs borrow in this market mainly to overcome short term shortages of funds. This provides an opportunity to banks with short-term surplus funds 
to park their money at reasonable interest rates in a safe instrument. Shortfall of money with banks may be triggered by various reasons. This includes fixed deposit, overdraft or credit limit withdrawals being significantly more than the addition to fixed deposits or loan accruals on a particular day. Proximity to date of meeting mandatory CRR oblique SLR requirements of the central bank is also one of the triggers for increase in demand for call money. An increase in CRR rates may put further pressure on banks running short of funds in the short term. At times, a particular economic development or crucial dates with respect to deposit of tax, seasonal variations leading to large requirement of funds by the farming community, November to April being the busy season, may lead to shortfall of funds with some banks and hence the need for overnight oblique notice money market. Prudential limits and trading mechanism. The borrowing and lending limits of all the call money market participants has been decided by Reserve Bank of India. According to these guidelines, the maximum borrowing limit of scheduled commercial banks SCBs, in the call oblique notice money market is 125%. However, the fortnightly average borrowing for SCBs is restricted to 100% of their capital funds within bracket tier 1 and tier 2 capital. On the other hand, the lending limits for SCBs is limited to the extent of 50% of their capital funds on a particular day and average fortnightly outstanding lending is restricted to 25% of their capital funds. Similarly, for cooperative banks, the borrowing in the call oblique notice money market is limited to 2% of their aggregate deposits at the closing of previous financial year. However, primary dealers are permitted to borrow up to 225% of the total net owned funds within bracket NOF in a reporting fortnight as at end of the previous financial year and they can lend on an average up to 25% of their NOF in a reporting fortnight. Trading mechanism. Until a decade ago, most of the trading in the call oblique notice money market used to take place over the phone. However, with the operationalization of an electronic screen based negotiated code driven system in 2008, the scenario has reversed. Since all the deals either have to be transacted over the NDS or reported on the NDS within 15 minutes of the deal being finalized, the NDS is a preferred option for call market participants these days. Moreover, NDS provides the facility of direct negotiation on one-to-one -one basis. Online monitoring of exposure and regulatory limits and facilitates dealing in call, notice and term money. It further facilitates the settlement of call money market on T plus zero basis and on T plus one basis for notice and term money. This online electronic screen based system offers the advantage of transparency and better rate discovery ongoing which offers on real time basis, imparts greater transparency and facilitates better rate discovery in the call money market. The settlement and repayment of these deals also takes place by electronic fund transfer on real time gross settlement within bracket RTGS system operated by the RBI. The reporting time on NDS is up to 5 pm on weekdays and 2.30 pm on Saturdays or as decided by RBI from time to time. The call rates. The rates in the call market are most influenced by the liquidity conditions in the short term. A spike in the deposits or easing of reserve requirements impact the call rates on the supply side. Whereas 
X outflows and seasonal variations in credit requirement have an impact on the demand side. Usually, call rates vary between repo rate on the lower side and reverse repo on the higher side. Tight liquidity conditions imply that call rates inch towards reverse repo and vice versa. The call rates are calculated on actual divided by 365 days basis. The interest rates in the call notice money market are often treated as benchmark rates for short term in the economy. Characteristics of Indian call money market. Call money market provides a safe haven for parking short term surpluses of the bank. It provides an opportunity to bank oblique PD facing shortfall to meet fund requirements without a collateral. Interest rates in this market are not fixed. They are market determined based on demand and supply of funds. Hence, the interest rate in this market are very volatile. At times, wide fluctuations are observed in this market even during the day. RBI intervenes in this market through liquidity adjustment facility, in short LAF, and through open market operations or known as OMO. Usually, the contracts, oblique deals in this market take place over the phone. However, brokers are not permitted in this market. The transactions involved in call money market are of a very high value. Towards the end of fiscal year, that is around 31st March, spikes are usually observed in the Indian call money market, leading to increase in the overnight benchmark known as Bombay Interbank Offered Rate, in short, MIMBO. The Indian banks abstain from uncollateralized lending in interbank call money market on the last day of the fiscal, so as to maintain their capital adequacy ratio. As per the domestic accounting rules, capital adequacy ratios for the following year are set based upon the funds disclosed on the last day of the fiscal year. Hence, even though the banks may have excess cash, but they do not indulge in lending. This puts additional pressure on the interbank call money rates towards the end of the fiscal year. Usually, RBI injects liquidity via repo transactions. But even then, the call rates tend to rise. For example, in 2012-13, the call rates increased to 16% on March 28, the last day of the fiscal year 2012-13, in comparison to 8% towards the beginning of the month. The paucity of funds at the end of fiscal year leads to a lot of volatility in the call rates. Usually, the banks which require cash at the end of the year act early since they are aware that funds dry towards the end of March. Treasury bills. What is a treasury bill? In short, T-bill. Treasury bills or T-bills are the instruments through which short-term borrowings are solicited by the government of India. They are promissory notes issued at a discount to their face value for a fixed time period. For example, 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. Types of T-bill. Treasury bills or T-bills offer short-term investment opportunity ranging from 91 days to 365 days. These are widely used by fund managers to park their short-term surplus, hence useful in managing short-term liquidity. At present, the government of India, oblique RBI, issued three types of treasury bills through auctions, namely 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. There are no treasury bills issued by state governments. They are issued for a minimum amount of Rs 25,000 
and in multiples of rupees 25,000. A T-bill is a discount security. Such securities do not make periodic interest payments. On the due date, the holder of the bill receives the maturity amount, which is also the face value of the bill. This value is definitely greater than the purchase value, which is the discounted price. The difference between the purchase value and face value represents the yield on T-bill. Treasury bills are also issued under Market Stabilization Scheme, in short, MSS. Who can invest in T-bill? Banks, primary dealers, state governments, provident funds, financial institutions, insurance companies, NBFCs, FIIs as per prescribed norms, NRIs and OCBs can invest in T-bills. Characteristics of T-bills The market for T-bills is the most liquid market all over the world. An active secondary market ensures liquidity for T-bills and being issued by Government of India makes them highly liquid and safe. Short-term investments instrument. In addition, T-bills are also approved assets for SLR purposes, thus providing short-term investment avenue for banks. RBA auctions them on a periodic basis by calling bids from banks, state government and other specified bodies. Within bracket to bidders, quoting above the cutoff price fixed by RBI. They are issued at a discount and redeemed at the face value on maturity. The difference between issue price and redemption price is the interest earned on the security. For example, a 91-day treasury bill of Rs. 100 face value may be issued at Rs. 97 that is at a discount of rupees 3 to its face value. The buyer would receive the face value of rupees 100 on the due date. The difference between the issue price and maturity value rupees 100 that is rupees 3 is a return to the investor and works out to be 12.40 percent per annum. How to purchase? Auctions for T-bills are held on the negotiated dealing system, NDAs, and the members electronically submit their bids on the system. Non-competitive bids are routed through the respective custodian or any bank or PD which is a member of NDAs. Non-competitive bidders mean that they do not have to quote the price at which the desire to buy the T-bills. The Reserve Bank allots bids to the non-competitive bidders at the weighted average price of the competitive bids accepted in the auction. Allocations to non-competitive bidders are in addition to the amount notified for sale. The amount accepted for non-competitive bids is over and above the notified amount and there is no limit placed. However, non-competitive bids in Treasury Bill is available only to state governments and other state entities and is not available to the cooperative banks. Only one bid is allowed to be submitted by an investor either through a bank or primary dealer. For bidding under the scheme, an investor has to fill an undertaking and send it along with the application for allotment of securities through a bank or a primary dealer. Retail market for T-bills. Safety combined with liquidity, stable returns and zero TDS make T-bills an attractive short-term investment option in the western countries like US and UK. These countries offer a very simplified internet-based procedure to make accounts and do T-bill transactions. In USA alone, half million account holders own more than 20 billion worth of T-bills, 
indicating the popularity of the instruments among retail investors. According to experts, the move to increase retail participation will create depth in the GSEC market, add volumes and improve pricing mechanism. RBI has indicated its keenness to involve individuals, oblique retail investors, the huge market for T-bills. The provision of negotiated dealing system, order matching, and DSOM was a step in the direction of involving, introducing retail investors in the market for T-bills. The facility is expected to be made available within the next three months. The non-competitive bidding facility available to retail investors is currently applicable only to auctions of dated securities other than treasury bills. Auctions 91 day T bills are auctioned under uniform price auction method, whereas 364 days T bills are auctioned on the basis of multiple price auction method. The Reserve Bank of India conducts auctions usually every Wednesday to issue T bills. Payment for the T bills purchased are made on the following Friday. The 91 day T bills are auctioned every week on Wednesday. The Treasury bills of 182 days and 364 days tenor are auctioned on alternate Wednesdays. T bills of 364 days tenor are auctioned on the Wednesday preceding the reporting Friday, while 182 T bills are auctioned on the Wednesday prior to a non reporting Fridays. Table 1. The Reserve Bank releases an annual calendar of T bill issuances for a financial year in the last week of March of the previous financial year. The Reserve Bank of India announces the issue details of T bills through a press release every week. Payment by allottees at the auction is required to be made by debit to their custodian's current account. Schedule of T-bill auctions and payments. Read the table. Types of T-bills, day of auction, date of payment. 91 days, Wednesday, date of payment following Friday. 182 days. Wednesday of non-reporting week, following Friday. 364 day, Wednesday of reporting week, and payment is made on following Friday. If the date of payment falls on a holiday, the payment is made on the day after the holiday. Calculation of yield on a T-bill. In case of yield calculation of T-bills, we follow the day count convention in India. 365 oblique actual, which implies that the actual number of days remaining to maturity is taken as numerator, whereas denominator is the number of days in a year, that is 365. Now yield on a T bill is calculated as per the following formula. Yield is equal to D upon P into 365 divided by t multiplied by 100, wherein d is the discount on t bill, 100 minus purchase price, p is the purchase price, t is the actual number of days to maturity. Illustration. We assume that if a 91 day treasury bill is issued at rupees 97, face value is equal to rupees 100 then the yield on the same would be yield is equal to 3 by 97 multiplied by 365 divided by 91 multiplied by 100 is equal to 12.4051%. After 45 day of issue, if the T bill is trading at 98, then the yield would be 2 upon 98 into 365 divided by 46 into 100 is equal to 16.1934%.
that the remaining maturity of the treasury bill is 46 days 91 minus 45 the latest figures of outstanding t bills of government of india as on 8th august 2014 is as government of india treasury bills outstanding face value as on august 8 2014 the first column is talking about 14 day 91 day 182 day 364 day cmb major holders banks primary dealers state governments and last column is of total and these are rupees in billion 14 day banks nil primary dealers nil state governments 735.8 the total is 742.3 91 day 322.2 317.7 the total is 1777.9 182 day 211.6 309.174.5 the total is 816.9 364 day 466.3 524.1 12.0 and the total is 1426.9 CMB is nil 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 source is www.rbi.org.in cash management bills a new short term instrument Cash management bills has been introduced by RBI to meet temporary cash flow mismatches of the government of India. The cash management bill that is CME is the most flexible instrument since it can be issued when needed for any duration less than 91 days. It permits central bank to maintain lower cash balances and issue relatively less number of long-term securities. CMBs are non-standard discounted instrument issued for maturities less than 91 days. Their generic character is similar to that of treasury bills. The yields on CMBs tend to be higher as compared to that on fixed maturity bills. However, the overall interest expense of RBI on CMBs is lower due to their shorter maturities. Characteristics of cash management bills The tenure, notified amount and date of issue of the proposed cash management bills is flexible. It depends upon the temporary cash requirement of the government of India. However, the tenure is limited to less than 91 days. Just like treasury bills, CMBs are issued at discount to the face value through auctions. The announcement of the auction of CMBs is made by the Reserve Bank of India through separate press release issued one day prior to the date of auction. The settlement of the auction takes place on T plus 1 basis. Cash management bills are tradable and qualify for ready forward facility. Investment by banks in CMBs is treated as an eligible investment and in government securities for SLR purpose. Interbank bank call money market is mainly used by banks for overnight borrowing or lending of funds. The interest rates in this market are very volatile and depend upon the demand and supply situation. Treasury bills are offered by the Reserve Bank of India for a time period of 91 days, 182 days and 364 days. They are issued by a process of auctions. They are indicator of short term interest rates in the economy. Cash management bills are the most flexible discounted instrument issued by RBA for maturities less than 91 days.